For the upcoming issue of All Out Cricket, we assembled a crack team of cricket writers, historians, broadcasters, and asked them to answer one question for us. Who has played the best innings of the century so far? Um, we're lucky to have two of those luminaries here with us today, Andy Zaltzman, John Hotton, and, uh, and Phil Walker, All Out Cricket <laughs> editor, and myself, Joe Harmon, deputy editor of the magazine. Um, the results are in. We're not going to reveal the winner quite yet. You'll have to buy the magazine out on Thursday. Remind me of the date? The 3rd or the 4th? The 4th. Fourth. The 4th fourth of August. Um, available on all good news agents and on the All Out Cricket website. But what you see before, behind us is the top 20 in no particular order. Um, so, yeah, have a look at that. That's your 20. Now what we're going to do is uh, pick out our individual top threes and have a bit of a chat about them and kind of try and work out exactly what for us made a particularly great innings. Uh, so should we start with Andy on the well, far left? What's, uh, what, was your, what was your top three? What was your criteria? Top three. Well, criteria, I like to consider the impact of an innings on a match and uh, on, a, on a series. Uh, Graham Smith's 154 not out at edge batting in 2008. Uh, I picked with huge reluctance because and Graham Smith is one of my least favourite batsmen of all time <laughs> from an aesthetic point of view. I mean, you know, in, in terms of the, the artistry of batting, uh, it's sort of like watching Freddy Krueger chainsaw a basket of puppies to pieces. But he had balls of steel and he was a phenomenally good player and one of the most influential cricketers of the millennium, I think. And in this, this occasion, uh, South Africa chasing 281 to win, Good England attack, Sidebottom and Panasar in the top 10 in the world, Flintoff uh, still a very good bowler at that point, Anderson just coming through towards 100 test wickets. Um, and so it's also a fourth innings, not fourth well. innings chase, yeah. 154 not out of uh, 246 balls, and South Africa ended up winning quite easily, but they had been 93 for four, and uh, you know, it looked like he was the one thing standing between England and victory, and by playing this innings, he also, I think, not Paul Collingwood's century in the innings before, which I think was Collingwood's best saving, for innings, yeah. uh, for England, uh, out, out of contention. But Smith was injured as well, wasn't he? He had a back, back injury, oh, I yeah, think, I, at the I, time. I've forgotten that aspect of it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, <clears throat> but how could you tell? <laughs> well, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, his cover drive would look I mean, more like some form of war crime than a cricket <laughs> show. <laughs> but you cannot deny how good, how tough a player he was. And how often he did it against England over here as well? Because yeah, he turned up here as a 12 year old, was captain <laughs> those yeah, two doubles yeah, straight off the yeah, bat. It was about his third test or something, wasn't it? Yeah, terrifying player. Yeah, so that was uh, one. Uh, Laxman's 280, 281. Um, Never heard of it. In Calcutta, which I imagine if this was voted on in India would probably get a, 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 I don't know, 1.3 billion votes. Um, uh, I, I think probably the greatest innings ever played in cricket, partly because of. The, the context, both uh, in terms of the series that that innings turned round, winning from following on in the second test, India being hammered in the first test. The Indian scores in that series, uh, the first three innings of the series, 176, 219, 171. McGrath had 9 for 62 in the series at the start of India's uh, second innings in Calcutta. They were 270 odd behind. Um, and uh, he made two, 200, 281. Now, most massive innings. Uh, in some ways, the sort of latter part of it often becomes sort of procedural rather than, you know, I think a lot of the best innings are sort of smaller, you know, over 100 ideally, but not even necessarily that. But this, sort of every run of it was crucial. It was turning the game round, mm. uh, obviously, with massive health from Dravid. He hit an amazing number of fours, 44 fours, and I was able to hit more fours in an innings right. against Australia. He hit 35, so 140 runs in fours when he reached 200, which is as many fours as Len Hutton hit here. In his 364 wow. stats, and you uh, think as well by the end they'd have you know four men on the on the boundary, four or five on the boundary as well, just trying to bore him out. So continue yeah. to, to. Well, hit I think um, I think Australia did keep quite attacking field for 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 most of it, but even so, you look at the attack. Um, McGrath, number one in the world. Um, Gillespie, Kasparovic, Shane Warne. That's a pretty tidy Can't attack, do. and Australia had won 16 tests in a row, including four massive victories <laughs> against India the last four times they played. Do you so, think Travis has been a slightly Unfairly overlooked in his role in all of this. I mean, he still got 180, I think it was. He got he got 180. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily unfairly. Maybe doesn't get quite the credit because Laxman's innings was such a sort of iconic mm. 
innings, and uh, it was the, the first part of Laxman's innings that started that momentum shift, and then obviously because Laxman put in a, a three, wasn't he, after batting nicely in a in a low first innings yes, total, he got put up to three. Yeah. Dravid, who'd been not in such great form, was down at six. Yes, uh, and then I think Laxman was back down into the middle order after that. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I can't remember if we played in three. The next, you got a couple of fifties in the next test. Well, that India had won by two wickets to take the series. Uh, 2-1, but also Laxman, when he, he began that test match, had a test average of 27 from 20 matches, had two scores over 50 in his previous 11 tests, I think. So it was a, it was a bit of an individual bolt from the blue, but mm. in terms of turning a series against one of the greatest teams of all time, um, I'm not sure there hadn't been anything to match it. And then he carried on after that as well, didn't he? Was saying, when yeah, he played Australia, he, he just took yeah, it to the clean. But he almost immediately after that he joined the, the, the great... You know, triumvirate of yeah. so and, and just uh, just on and Dravid, didn't it? In terms of people who talk about them as a, as a four, yeah, and very it, quickly after, and it was packed as well. And yeah, a, yeah. Another thing, we've just been uh, uh, the Kusal Mendes innings in in Sri Lanka, uh, which had it happened, you know, a week sooner, might he, he missed, missed the cut. cut. I'm I'm sorry, he missed the cut. Uh, played out to an, an empty seat for that. Mm. Needed like ten thousand people going nuts. Mm. Um, yeah. and it was packed yeah. Eden Gardens, and you know, it was uh, yeah, probably. The, greatest moment in Indian cricket, even more so than winning the World Cup, I think. Just finally on that last minute, um, came against Australia, you'll notice that a number of these, and if you go further down the list, this is the top 20, further down the list, Australia are the opponents of a number of these <laughs> innings. Also, on the other side of it, there are few Australians who actually feature in, there's few Australian batsmen who actually feature, there are two in here, there's Ponting and there's Clark in the top 20. Um, but they don't really feature down the line. Gilchrist does, because Gilchrist is the outlier. Gilchrist is, is the freak. But that kind of collective monster, you know, the, the, the many-headed monster of Hayden, Langer, Ponting, etc., etc., the War Twins, they've kind of almost been sort of congealed into one, you know, whereas <laughs> these innings are often one-man stands, you know, yes. they're often outlying knocks. There's a lot of Lara in there because he's playing with, with players who are obviously mediocre at best. Um, so it's just an interesting kind of aspect when we went through all the details that Australia are the opponents, but they, they hardly feature at all in the list itself. We should also say as well that we've got four Englishmen lined up here, yeah. but there, were, there was actually, the panel was made up of Pakistanis, Indians, we had I think five or six Australians in the panel, so it's, it wasn't just an English vote. It's a great backhanded compliment. Mm, yeah. you, know, you, you, you give a knock almost more the way if it comes against a team as good as that. Yeah. And how many Australians had the opportunity to play a brilliant knock when nothing else much happened yeah, in the innings? Yeah, exactly, the, yeah, the two yeah. we've got up in our 20s, we've got Ponting at Old Trafford in 05 and Clark at Cape Town in 2014. Mm -hmm. Both innings in adversity, uh, in not particularly big totals, when the team is struggling. And that's, that's when we think it's a truly great Australian innings because they're not used to having yeah. to do that, or weren't that used to. And your third innings, Andy? Yeah, well, it's another Michael Clark innings that's not on this list that didn't make the top 20 because fundamentally democracy doesn't work, as we've discovered in this nation of late. Uh, 151 at, uh, also at Cape Town on the previous Australian tour of South Africa in November uh, 2011 in an extraordinary game. Um, Australia all out for 284 in their first innings. Clark made 151 of them of 176 balls. Then South Africa all out 96, Australia all out 47, and they ended up with South Africa winning quite easily, but in those first three innings, uh, there was only uh, one other score over 40, which was Sean Marsh in Australia's first innings. And this was against Stain, who was number one in the world, Morkel, who was number four, Philander, who was on debut, but about to have one of the most extraordinary runs of form a modern bowlers had. And uh, he, I mean, he scored most of his runs off, off their pace attack as well, in Ram Tahir was playing as well, but he didn't, didn't face uh, much of him in that innings. It was a really extraordinary individual effort amidst. Uh, like a, a three innings collapse. By the end of the third innings, all other batsmen combined, including Clark in his second innings, had got 227 for 29. <laughs> and he scored 151 wow. in the first innings. Yeah, and it speaks uh, for itself. Although it ended up losing the game, it, with, without it, Australia would have been pretty much doomed from the start, you'd have thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, there's Andy's top three. Uh, we'll move on to John. You might also hear we've been joined by the Stone Roses back there. This is, we are <laughs> at just the another Oval. reunion. Yeah. We are at the Oval. Uh, there is a T20 game starting a couple of hours between uh, Kent and Surrey. So, yeah, it was just uh, all, part of, all part of the package. Uh, <laughs> What's their view on the top, the top test? <laughs> well, the Stone Roses? Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're very much in Graham Smith's camp, actually. Right, yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't have seen that coming, but yeah, they, they like their left hand openers, yeah. especially in Brown. 
to join your top three. Yeah, I mean, I think Andy, you know, as you would expect, came in quite rigorously with, uh, you know, Standard the opposition and statistics and so on. You see, you hard there. Yeah, he right. has, and I think mine was a slight. If, if anything, sort of united with the three innings I picked. The sort of element of emotion, really, and uh, you know, certainly one of them was uh, for a whole country quite a landmark. That was my first pick, which was Brendan McCollum's 302 against India. Um, I which think didn't make our top 20. We've got McCullum in there, but it's, it's, it's uh, the vastest yeah. I mean, test century. Yeah, I mean, there. again, it's interesting. Uh, McCullum and another batsman I've picked, sort of about the minute, Kevin Peterson. There's a sort of argument as to whether they are great players or whether they are players of great innings. I think that's probably a you know, debate for another day. But, um, <laughs> but, but certainly McCullum was in the middle of this, this run where he did elevate himself onto another level. I mean, before, I suppose, he assumed the captaincy of New Zealand and... There was an element of entitlement, and I always remember on Jared King's blog, Cricket Report, he used to be referred to as Prince Brendan, because he kind of, you know, had this this air almost of, uh, you know, the entitled talent who hadn't quite fulfilled himself. Right? He then was this incredible period against India where he made a double hundred and then a triple hundred. Um, it was obviously New Zealand's first ever triple hundred. And unusually, I think sometimes with triples, they come to sort of take over the match to such a degree that's all you remember about the game. But in McCollum's case, this was a genuine, a bit like Maxman's, it genuinely turned the game in the series around. I think the, I'll have to refer quickly to the stats, but he came in second innings, New, um, New Zealand were 94 for five, and he was still 150 behind. So they were really looking at hiding and actually losing a, a series that they, they, it was needing to to, they needed to draw to they win the series. They needed to draw to win the they? series, yeah. and it looked like they might, you know. India were ranked them. number one yeah. in the world at the time as well. They were, and I think. More than that, I think you know McCollum. He came out, and I think he'd set himself out to do this. I think he, he said later he knew that a hundred wasn't going to be enough. Potentially, even a double hundred might not be enough at this stage. He was supported by Watling, the keeper, who probably in the in the Dravid role. I think Jimmy Neesham also got a hundred afterwards mm. as well. It was a more more free, free flowing one. But I just think McCollum. He, he came of age in that innings, and it and it did because of Martin Crow getting the two nine nine, and then never mm. having been a a New Zealand triple hundred, it's such a landmark for every country when they get that first one. Um, I think there was an element of emotion to it, and and the way the innings broke up, in being I think mean, it was about 280 odd, not out overnight on the second day, it enabled everyone to turn up just to see whether he could do it. And even then, I remember watching it uh, on TV, and even then, when everyone turned up, I think he was on about 290 or, and he edged behind just short of Donny. You thought, oh God, don't. Whatever you do, don't <laughs> not do it. Don't you must have been asleep by that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's really switched off after about he, yeah, he, 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 you know, McCormick came in in the 18th over and he was out in the 200th over. Yeah, so he's, he's not a batsman you, you he, associate with. You associate with that, but, and again, he, I mean, you said only, he hit four sixes in the end. Right. Which you'd imagine if McCollum had got a, yeah. I'm sure the other innings that we talk about were far more spectacular. Than that. So I think that was my first pick. They had a kind of, you know, emotional edge to it. The second was, um, Sachin Tendulkar's last Test 100, which came against South Africa. Um, and although he played, I think, another 40 odd innings after that, this turned out to be his final. And I think it had that kind of autumnal glow about it. It was the last embers of a, of a great, great cricketer. And I, I always loved that, those sort of last few hundreds that players score. You think about Ponting or Steve Waugh or, you know, Boycott's last. 100. I saw Gower's last 100 here against. Uh... India. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. On the second low test over the bank. Mentioning Steve was not that that came quite high in the list overall, and yet when you look at it, it was in, in a game that they lost. It was yeah. a game that yeah. already four 0 up in the series, and with respect against a pretty ordinary and knackered England, England attack, and yet the emotion and the symbolism of it elevates it up. I think all the that's way what up it is. It's that you know it is that, and Tendulkar at the time was using this amazing bat he had for a long time. And actually, when you looked at it, 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 the cracks, he hadn't really taped it up, but the cracks down the middle of it had run vertically, and he hit the ball in the middle of the bat so often. It was actually a kind of black spot in the right. middle of this bat. And it looked amazing. You, could, you, you know, you just knew he was attached to this bat and didn't want to let it go. Yeah. Probably until he'd got, uh, you know, this, uh, these final couple of hundreds he was trying to get to get the 100 international hundreds. And this he had a famous battle with, with Stain. This, this was right? he, this yeah. was, I mean, this essentially came, the test match and the series came down to this battle between Tendulkar and Stain, yeah. which I suppose gives it the innings a, a further significance. 
Um, and Callis, Callis, who's I guess at a similar phase of his career, got two hundreds in the same yeah. game. So, the sort of the last flowering of twentieth century batsmanship. Yeah. Well, again, and I think Dhoni had said that he sort of felt this was India's last chance to win a series like that with with Lachman was playing still. Tendulkar and Dravid were still playing. And Shreesan. Well, <laughs> and the great yeah. Shreesan. Who still says on Facebook he's about to make a comeback. So um, I'm mm. sure he will. I mean, the can't, can't see what could possibly stop Shreesan from coming back. But, uh, so, so I think, yeah, this, this, this great battle with, uh, with Stain, where Tendulkar was fallible. It wasn't one of those ones where you know, the, he, he got on top and started smashing him around or anything like that. Stain beat him quite often. And Tendulkar was almost over and off stump. And I think just watching for the away, just letting it come to almost towards his, his head. And if it was outside of his eye line, he knew he could leave the ball. And it was a, just, I thought, that, you know, magnificent flowering uh, of his final, final greatness. Really. So that was my second pick. And the last was, which I think a lot of people did pick, I'll talk a bit about it, along with the Chinese, Peterson's innings here in 2005, which again, talking about the emotional pitch of which innings to play. I think I always thought of Peterson as an emotional player, a bit like McCollum. They need the big stage, they need to feel this almost sort of symphonic ebb and flow of games and series, and they will turn it on when that moment comes. And this was that first sort of iteration of that mm -hmm. for Peterson here. I hardly need to describe the circumstances under which it was played. But it was just, I mean, I don't think you could make any case of saying it was his best in this. And he but doesn't either. No, no, because it was just, I mean, there were top edges flying to the stands yeah. and he was dropped when he was. Uh, to, hadn't played very many by Warren, wasn't he? And I mean, he, he said he, said he edged one, well, I think it was on one and he edged it, it nipped off Gilchrist's glove. To Hayden, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. And yeah. he said to us, I mean, it was, it was all instincts, it, there was no yeah. premeditation yeah. about it. And I think he said the, the faster Brett Lee bowled, the more instinctive <laughs> yeah. it was. He yeah. couldn't kind of because, drag well, himself out of the battle. Well, it was a lightning yeah. quick spell. Yeah. Right? It was an astonishing yeah. spell of bowl. I think that's one of the, the greatest little sort of half hours of cricket yeah. that. Of my cricket watching yeah. lifetime, it was, it was like straight on the lunch. It was either side of lunch, wasn't yeah. it? He said yeah. that Lee had a go on the I, side of lunch. Sickeningly, I was actually here live, so I saw yeah. it. Um, <laughs> and that you're, you're bang on. So that half hour was terrifying and the most electric cricket I've ever seen live. And he bowled 96.7 MPH at one point. Um, yeah. Took Peterson's glove, looped over uh, the two slips, and, and went for four down the third yeah. man. Um, it, just another thing, you're right that he was dropped at slip early on in his innings, next over from Warner, he hit two sixes, right into there, right to the OCS stand, yeah. two sixes in, in the next over having been dropped yeah. Yeah, by this Warner. Was, this, this was how he that, determined to play in that series. That was right astounding. We had no grasp yeah. that this is what yeah. Englishmen did. Yeah. You know, English <laughs> England England we but just had no idea yeah. that's how you could ever save a game. Yeah. You know, it was completely yeah. alien. But he to you know, this was, this was, goes back to the very start of the series and the early meetings they had where he came out as a young player in an early team meeting and said, no, you've got to, you know, you've got to hit me. That's the only way you can play with is to hit it. Mm. And he did it at Lords and he did it here. Yeah. And I think that spell by Lee was punctuated or, or concluded by that unbelievable flat back pull straight back yeah. past him, yeah. yeah. which yeah. sort of went almost straight from hit it so early. Uh -huh. It's thought this guy's eye is just and all, I mean, staggered. The, you know, again, you look at the, the what well, the attack he was up against, mm. McGrath and Warner had one of the greatest series any cricket has ever had. Yeah. Yeah. And Liam Tate bowling furiously <laughs> yeah. quickly. And I um, remember mm -hmm. I was here uh, sitting uh, on the other side of the ground at, at lunch, eating a very nervous cold takeaway curry that I'd ordered the night before. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never known such tension. Because England were yeah. five down at lunch. Flintoff had just been out. Yeah. We were five down at lunch. Collingwood was playing his first home test match. Um, and just the, the, it was the, the collective fear around the ground. Yeah. And, the, and the kind of, oh, here we go again yeah. when the wicket like, started. We were, well, I think 70 yeah. on ahead, or maybe a little bit yeah. more, five down. And you know, if we lost wickets after lunch, they could easily have And, and then, uh, obviously, yeah. Colin will go his famous nine. Yeah. But he really was. Really was. Six and 13 really balls, was. day six and 13 yeah. balls after lunch against Lee, yeah. having been beaten up before lunch. And I think that was the moment we started to think this is going to. Yeah. But I suppose the other point I'd make about that innings, when you come to choosing it, is significant. It, is, it was hugely significant for cricket in England because it won, it, you know, it won them the series. Although the Test ended in a draw, obviously, and you had, you, know, you without it, you wouldn't have got the parade. Well, I mean, for good or for bad, everyone was watching cricket at that point, and that was a, a moment of huge significance and the last terrestrial TV series. So, for all of those reasons, I think you would pick that innings as being 
one of the most significant of the year. Yeah, well, I certainly did it. It came in there in my top three as well. Um, that's your three, that's done, three. Yeah, superb. J just, just from me, from my point of view, I picked uh, Dumini's one six six at Melbourne. I put him, his knock in my top three. Um, again, similar to what I was talking about earlier about the power of Australia and how everything was met, met against Australia. You know, that was the the benchmark. Um, and that innings came in a series that, Aus that Australia lost at home for the first time in centuries and centuries. Um, and Dumini was a young young player with a hell of a lot of talent. I remember Ian Chappell compared yeah, yeah. him to Lara Actually, at the time, time, the new yeah, Lara yeah, yeah. and so on. And he made 166 in partnership with Dale Stane, who was batting at 10 in a game that they were behind in. Uh, and he turned it around, and I remember watching it through the night. And again, all these innings that, that individuals pick, you have a particular personal relationship with. I, I remember what the Laxman innings following it on CFAX <laughs> and being excited about Oh, there you go. 3-4-1. Dates date it somewhat. <laughs> uh, and and I, remember, I remember realising A, that Australia were fallible, and B, that there may be this, this outstanding young player emerging, you know, out of, out of evidently nowhere, you know, and a working class kid from Cape Town as well. And I remember being, remember watching it and never having really seen, certainly in my time, Australia being dealt a little bit of their own medicine, you know, a Gilchrist-esque kind of marshalling of the tail and so on. Uh, they went on to win that, and they went on to win that series as well. So that, that innings has always stuck with me, and I've always had a soft spot for him. Mm. And well, it's interesting. I mean, I remember been in pain he, seeing him kind of uh, fail to really nail yeah, it. Yeah, because I remember how well he timed the ball in that innings. And it was a bit like Phil Hughes in that respect. Um, not in terms of style, but just this someone who seemed a very natural cricketer. Phil Hughes' two hundreds against uh, out in South Africa for Australia. Um, yeah, that just that natural ability, that's fine and critical. I think yeah. Dumini had that at yeah. that stage. And it's interesting when you you think Dumini maybe Mark Butcher, who's probably gonna get a mention somewhere here. Um, you know, great players potentially, but Well it was an odd time because you say Hughes came in and then didn't have the success that it looked like he was going mm. to have more Akmal, I think, made a debut hundred about the same time and that Adrian Barrow yeah. for West Indies, all these kind of young guys that were yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. A few, but Dumini, that it was an extraordinary. He made, a, I think, a Mac, well, a fifty that had helped win the previous the previous game. Yeah, when they chased four hundred. Yeah. yeah, they chased four hundred in the previous game. Smith again. Graham Smith made a hundred in that in that chase, yeah. and there was a kind of a changing of the guard moment, yeah. having feared that Australia may just be certainly at home, pretty much impenetrable. You know, and so that that series has always stuck out for me, and and Dumini's knock in there as the as the diamond of that series, really. And my other two, echo, echo yourself, you know, KP here and, and Lachman as well, of course, you know, the 281. Um, so that's my three. And Joey, what, what do you have? My three, when I came, it sounds obvious, but I, I only picked innings that I saw. Um, not necessarily there, but at least on TV. So, for instance, one that I didn't pick, trawling through scorecards, you look at Lara's Colombo knock, 221. Um, in a losing cause, they lost by 10 wickets. He scored a century in the uh, first innings as well, or second innings. He scored a double, he became the first player to score a double century and a century in the same match, and his team lose the test. Yeah, that's unlucky, really. That is really unlucky, but I didn't see a ball of it. So whilst I can appreciate his brilliance, it hasn't got the memories, it hasn't got the kind of, doesn't have those vivid qualities for me. I, I, I love innings like that. I love innings <laughs> that I haven't seen enough, so I can yeah. imagine how amazing they are. I mean, yeah. In that whole series, he got... 680 yeah. runs in a 3 0 man of the series. In a, in but a you, you can kind of imagine he wouldn't have minded. Imagine, you too imagine, much. The, <laughs> can you imagine the flight home, Lara in first class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Resting in the but it's interesting, I mean, he, he features three times on this board, just in the top 20, and he features further down the list as well. well I mean, I the, think the one man rear guard, the one man. I, I think, I, yeah, I mean, I think you can, yeah, we can go on about that debate about great innings or great players. Lara was indisputably to both, didn't he? Yeah. Played some of the landmark innings yeah. of the era and was. Probably the greatest batsman in the year as well. Yeah. Um, and then my other criteria, I wasn't, I wasn't kind of conscious, but I seem to like sixes quite a lot. <laughs> it seems to have been uh, recurring in my top ten. Because you never hit one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lachman <laughs> hit, hit, hit no sixes, one. and only five in his entire test career. There you go. That's real class. So That's I've got, why you hate him. <laughs> so I've got Stokes at Cape Town earlier this year. Um, just extraordinary display of hitting from a player we kind of knew was capable of something like that, but not to that extent over that prolonged amount of time. It's a shame that it was in a kind of a bit of a rubbish test match by the end, but you didn't know that at the time, and my memory of watching that innings unfold 
uh, is as excited as I've been about cricket since 2005, yeah. I would say. Um, just, um, on, just on that one, yeah. Joe, just briefly, David Frith, um, oh, good who's, point. who's yeah. been writing about cricket for the best part of half a century and more, he's a part of our panel. Um, and he, he makes the point, obviously having seen cricketers live since the 50s, mm. he makes the point that he feels that Stokes is perhaps the most exciting batsman he's ever seen. So he picked Stokes mm. out as his number one, which I was a bit surprised mm. about. I, I, he's, he's seen a lot of cricket, but he said, he said the reason he particularly liked Stokes innings was because it made him think what it might have been like watching Gilbert, Gess Gilbert Jessup, right. which is quite a, quite a kind of convoluted way of coming around to it. But I, I see what he means, it kind of reminds him of what an astonishing player uh, yeah. Jessup would have been to watch, and you see that in, in Stokes now. And um, yeah, just an incredible, incredible knock. Um, my number two is another Peterson one, but um, 05 was very close. Uh, but I've gone for the Mumbai innings, the 186. Um, obviously, the, coming out of adversity of his reintegration, um, Alistair Cook bringing him back in. Uh, his Troubles against left arm spin were fascinating as well. It obviously it become a, a real thing in the media, and obviously in his mind, the more he denied it, the more it was clearly yeah. something that was bothering him. Um, and I, he he spoke to us about um, a, an email that Raul Dravid had, um, had sent him a, about yeah. about his method of playing spin. And it and it <laughs> the funny thing is, I mean, I don't think Peterson played spin anything like Dravid would. I mean, that <laughs> he didn't do anything that like <laughs> he didn't at all. But it, it obviously kind of. Managed to crystallise something in Peterson's head. They're both right-handed. <laughs> oh, no, well, well, you mentioned the left-arm spin. Hoja had taken nine in the nine wickets in the first test that England had lost, and forty-seven in his previous seven matches. And Peterson hit him for seventy-four off one hundred and five balls in that inning, <laughs> right. including three. three so I mean, an incredible turnaround, and, and the way he described it to us, a very conscious turnaround. It wasn't a case of like in 05, he got into the rhythm and was just hitting he decided his best way of playing Ozier was to attack and keep attacking. Uh, and obviously it was an incredible match, incredible series, historic win for England out there. The start of Alistair Cook's um, tenure as, as captain. And at that time it felt like a really exciting combination of Cook as captain and suddenly Peterson's yeah, yeah, behind him. Yeah. Obviously that didn't quite pan out. Cook but made 100 in that same inning. Yeah. And that was such a great partnership as batsmen mm -hmm. because it must have been impossible. You can't have two more different batsmen yeah. to bowl at. Yeah. I, I was at that one as well, by the way. I was at Mumbai as well for that one. And I remember a couple of things from it. I remember that Peterson was... Uh, his name and his emergence onto the pitch was greeted with the same kind of craziness as any of the Indian players, maybe with the exception of the big one, the biggest one. Um, he was treated as one of theirs, you know, and he's never really belonged to anybody, mm. Peterson. Um, but he's certainly as much a, a child of India as he is of, of, of England, you know. And, and I, I always remember that. Um, and then that shot against Oja, that shot over extra cover, oh, yeah. when Oja was bowling left arm over by this point. You were there too, yeah, Andy, yeah, yeah, and he was bowling left arm over. And it's all in slow motion, and he stays in the shot, stays in position, and he just lets the hands go, and it goes 20 yards back, 20 rows back. I interviewed him a few years ago, and I said to, me, I said to him, give me a couple of shots from your whole test career. Yeah. And he said, Dale, straight away, Dale Stain, Headingley, slow motion pull yeah, shot. Yeah. Oja, extra cover, Mumbai, and they've stuck with him as well, you know, so... No, not the hooks of Brett no, Hill Hill. no, no. I was sitting no. underneath the two that... They went a mile. I mean, <laughs> the ball was about 50 yards in the air and went over the boundary. No, no, he, he likes the other ones, it would seem. But, but again, 186 and the, the Cantona-like celebration as well, with the chest out just turning to each corner of the, the ground. Yeah, the boys are star. Definitely. And then the final one of my three was um, another McCullum innings, but this was this was his blitz uh, in his final test match uh, at Christchurch against Australia. Um, I've always been a massive fan of McCullum as a batsman, as a captain, and just the way he goes about playing his cricket. And it just felt like the perfect uh, so, yeah, send off. Yeah. Um, I remember I came back from the, the pub. You uh, texted me. Yeah, I had a few drinks, and I sent a text around to all these guys saying, I think something special is about to happen here. He was on about 30 or 40. Uh, and he was. The way he was riding his luck unbelievably. I mean, every, but he was just every shot was played with such force that any edges were just flying over the slips, and he wasn't going to stop. And he said, yeah. I had the pleasure of interviewing him a few weeks ago, and he said, I was sitting there watching Kane Williamson, best defensive technique in the world, not able to get on a bat on it. I'm, I'm going to just have to go. I haven't got a defensive technique, is what he said. I'm going to have to go out and have a hit. Uh, and he, he said he'd never be able to forgive himself with his final test innings, was him prodding at one and getting caught a second slip. So. 
this was his thinking, and it, and it played out so beautifully uh, against Australia would have meant a lot. And again, I mean, it, they lost the match, but who, who cares? I think, really? I think uh, the, way, the really nice thing about the innings was because he'd had the World Cup final, where you know he didn't, he he sort of transformed everyone's attitude to white ball cricket or one day cricket, fifty over cricket at that point. And it played so well in the semi final, went out, got a duck in the final, but went down playing his way. Mm. It was almost like that. This is his final test innings. It went his way instead of the, you know, the way the World Cup final had gone. I really like that but, element and of I, the innings as well. And I think the McCullum and you pick out is the the India triple century is is a more significant one really yeah. for the yeah. what it did for the team because that was really the start of the mm. kind of a newfound yeah. respect for New Zealand and it was the first triple century and it was in a winning series mm. course in, in a drawn match. Um, but this, in terms of the one that, that sticks in the mind, this this uh, yeah, this will live would live with me. I think. Yeah. And uh, in that, so you said how difficult Williamson was finding it. When, it's um, amazing that these are on his phone. You know, <laughs> it's, <watching> just, <laughs> it's on a word that I've looked it up. I did a bit of research. <laughs> what am I getting paid for this? Is it four grand or five grand? We'll talk about it after the show. Uh, when he came in, Hazelwood had one for six off eight point four overs, <laughs> and he hit Hazelwood for fifty four off twenty two. <laughs> And he hit him for uh, a six and three fours, I think, to break the record for the fastest test century right. yeah, as well. Yeah. So, I mean, he, yeah, he just uh, completely went for it. One other knot which I hadn't thought, didn't even cross my mind in this, but I just wanted to pick out, and it shows what people from different countries classify as a great knot. We had two Pakistanis on our panel, uh, Amir Nakvi and uh, Rian Hall Huck. Uh, and they both, both picked out as their number one, Cameron Akmal at Karachi against India in 2006. Now, no one else on our 37 panel put this anywhere in their top ten. But, and I remembered it, but not clearly, and went look, look at the scorecard. And this was when Pathan took a hat trick in the first over of the match. Pakistan was 39 for 6. Akmal scores a century. And Pakistan beat India by 341 runs to win the series against their arch rivals. And you can see from a Pakistan yeah. perspective, of course, that is the greatest knock of this century. He was trying to catch every ball as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's even great because he is this comic figure. I mean, this, this, this is it. I mean, he's. He became a bit of a laughing stock, and Amir raises this point in a nice little piece he wrote about it that that he was almost forgiven. All, everything else he did after that has almost been forgiven because of the greatness of this innings. I just thought that was a quite nice national specific innings that. Well, that see, uh, Chandimal's one sixty two uh, last year against India was uh, I mean, a similar sort of match winning innings that probably oh, I don't think I saw it. I don't know if it was on TV over here, but it was. Uh, we were following the scorecard, I think. Yeah, that, was, was... that was genuinely the genesis of this whole whole yeah. idea. Because we were following it and thinking, this might just get lost somewhere in the annals, you know, and this deserves to be commemorated as one of the great innings of the century. And then we thought, ah, great innings of the century. Yeah. And now, of course, it comes comes round to Mendis. You know, yeah. we, we titled this up and went to print three days ago. Within three days, you already have another innings that yeah. would probably get yes. onto this top 20. And Joe Root would be And Joe Root last week, 20, after yeah. we'd already put it in the can, it's 250-odd, chanceless, beautiful innings. So, so this is just the nature of the beast, that it keeps on rolling, the game keeps on providing us with these, these crazy, beautiful innings. If you're moments. doing the best innings of the century played by a 21-year-old with one first-class century, I think <laughs> Mendes's would definitely, yeah. Be, yeah. definitely be near the top. Yeah, that's for next month. <laughs> Well, I think that's a nice spot to, to round it up. As I say, uh, you can find out the number one in the next issue of the magazine, uh, which is out on Thursday the 4th of August. Really good. Uh, you can buy it in all good news agents or alloutcricket.com. You can buy uh, direct from us. Uh, and yeah, go and get yourself a copy. Uh, thanks so much for coming in, John, Andy. Thank you. Where's Phil? my money? Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> we'll resolve that later. <laughs>